Welcome back, GCSC Technology Integration YouTubers. I hope that everyone had a great summer and is looking forward to a great 2019-2020 school year. As we kick off the new school year, the first video of this year will be an overview of the new Windows Snip and Sketch tool. This is a product that is replacing the old Windows Snipping tool. Let's go ahead and learn a little bit about the new product right now. There are several ways that you can locate the new Snip and Sketch tool. The first way is to go to your search bar and type Snip. And for those of you that have used the Snipping tool in the past, you will see the Snipping tool is still an option. However, if you open that, you'll be prompted to try Snip and Sketch, which I strongly encourage you to do because Windows will be moving away from the Snipping tool and toward Snip and Sketch. So I'm going to click that to launch. Alternatively, I could type Snip and Sketch in the search area. I could also go to the Windows Start button and scroll down to the S's and find Snip and Sketch. Any of those three ways would work for loading the program. I'm going to go back to Snip and Sketch, and as you've probably guessed, Snip and Sketch is very similar to the Snipping tool. However, the functionality has improved over the previous version. In order to capture a screen clipping, I simply need to go to the button that is located next to New, hit the drop down, and I have three options. I can snip now, snip in three seconds, or snip in 10 seconds. The latter two obviously give you the advantage of if you need to make something happen on the computer by clicking some buttons, you can choose that option, click the buttons, and then get your screen clipping. So I'm going to select snip in 10 seconds so that I can open Google Chrome and capture a screen clipping. So I'm going to open Chrome. It's set to the GCSC weather stem page. I need to wait till the screen turns gray. Once the screen turns gray, I have three options for my screen clipping. I can select a rectangular clip, a freeform clip, or I can clip the entire screen. I'm going to stay with a rectangular clip. Notice the crosshairs is on the screen. I can left click with my mouse, hold down and drag. I could also do this, this with my stylus or my finger on the touch screen. And I'm just going to grab the five day forecast. And once I have done that, the snip will automatically be loaded into snip and sketch. Across the top middle portion of the screen right here, you will notice there are several options available to you. The first option is touch writing. If that's enabled, you can use your finger to complete any of the operations that I'm going to show you. Otherwise, you can use your mouse or your stylus. To the right of touch writing is the ballpoint pen. If you select the down arrow, you can choose the color that you would like, and you can also choose the thickness by adjusting the slider left or right as needed. And once you have done that, you can obviously use that pen to write, again with the stylus, the mouse, or your finger if touch is enabled. To the right of the ballpoint pen is the pencil. And again, you can choose the down arrow and choose the color that you would like. And you can select the thickness as well. And once you have done that, you can again draw on your screen clipping. And you can annotate however you would like. To the right of the pencil is the highlighter. There are fewer options here in terms of color, but again, you can adjust the thickness and choose the color. And once you have done that, you can highlight whatever material needs to be highlighted. To the right of the highlighter is an eraser. If you click the eraser once, it will allow you to erase one item. If you select the down arrow, you will have the option to erase all ink. To the right of the eraser is a new feature. This is the ruler. And if you select the ruler, a uh, ruler will appear obviously on your screen and it gives you the ability to draw a straight line with whichever tool you have selected. So if I select the ballpoint pen, it's going to draw a straight blue line. In order to rotate the ruler, I can use the scrolling wheel on my mouse. I can also use my two fingers and I can rotate and I can choose the angle that I would like to have and I can draw another line using the same tool. If I click the drop down on the ruler, I have the ability to select a protractor. And again, I can use my scrolling wheel on my mouse and I can increase or decrease the size. I can also use two fingers and I can move the protractor wherever it is needed. And I can use the same drawing tool, the pen, the pencil, or the highlighter. I got a little off there. And I can use that to draw whatever angle that I want. So if I want to draw something that's 201 degrees, I can draw that. To the right of the protractor is the ability to crop, and I can decrease what is on the image or readjust that as needed. And once I am done, I can click the check mark. Once you have a finished product and you are ready to move on with your clip, wherever that may be, you have three options on the right side of the screen. You have the ability to save as. If you click the save, if you click the disk button, rather, you can save as. You'll be prompted for the location where you would like to save your image. Again, saving to Google Drive is always a best practice. However, if you just need it for a few moments, you could save it on the desktop, which is what I will do and just call this example number one. I can save as a various file type, whether it be a PNG, a JPEG, or a GIF. 
For most people, the PNG is going to be fine. I'm going to click Save. To the right of Save is Copy. If I click Copy, it looks like nothing has happened other than check mark appears there for a split second. But what has happened is the image has been copied to the clipboard in the background of the computer where I can't see what is happening. And if I go to any document or email, I can simply paste that image into the document by clicking Control V or right clicking and pasting, and you will see the image is pasted into the document. Going back to Snip and Sketch, to the right of that is the Share button. The share button has the arrow, and if you click that, you have the ability to share to several other apps. Primarily of note to GCSE teachers is OneNote. So for those of you that use OneNote, you can send an image to your notebook and have it saved there. The final option, actually a fourth one, I said three, is if you hit the three dots, you can explore other options, but the one that may be of use there is the ability to print your image directly. One last feature of Snip and Sketch that is really nice that was not present in the snipping tool is the ability to annotate an image you already have. So if I click the folder right here, it will bring up my file explorer and I can locate any file, any picture file that I have that I would like to annotate. So I'm going to open this file and I can annotate this picture however I would like, whether that be with a compass or a ruler or a protractor or simply by drawing on the picture or writing a note. So if I select some tool, I can use that to draw. And then when I have finished, I can click save and I will save a duplicate copy of this. So I'm not altering the original, I'm annotating on it and saving a second copy with the annotation. That's a very quick overview of the Snip and Sketch app. Hopefully you will find a use for this in your classroom. Mm -hmm.